Hi guys, so when I woke up I was like, what do I want to work on today? And uh, I was going to do an impression obsession stamp um, company, like, card. I want to use the little coffee background plus the little coffee cup that you cut out and stuff. Um, but then I remembered, oh, I really want to get to this because I know you guys are curious and um, it is super cute. So uh, if I have any links in the description box, they will be affiliate links, which means I will make a small commission if you were to purchase the items through those links. Uh, so this is the Spellbinders August 2020. So for this month, if you sign up at all this month or um, purchase this or become a club, a club member, this is the stamp you'll get. No, the stamp. <laughs> this is the die you'll get for the APG club. So it's called a pop-up 3D vignette telephone. So it makes like a little mini album, like a card. You can fold it flat. And, uh, you know, Becca Feekin is known for those kind of things. Um, I have pretty much all her vignettes. Um, almost all of them. And they're really fun, really cute. You can make a book out of them. You can make a card. You could just leave them flat. You can, you know, do whatever you need to do. But, um, so I think this will be really fun. Again, if you sign up throughout um, August for this specific kit, this is what you will get. I do the works and um, with, it doesn't have shipping or tax, but like I said, I'm in California. So um, I do the works and so I just pay what it shows there. Uh, I think the shipping is included in all the prices. Um, if you're paying tax, I guess that depends on what state you're in. But um, so some are inexpensive, some are a little more costly. So I know this one's a little bit higher than the others. You do not have to stay in the club. You can skip, you can cancel it as soon as they send this out. You can <laughs> change the club that you're in. Um, really easy, all online. So it's not um, problematic to do any of that. And then you get 10% off their site after you become a club member. And it usually kicks in within almost immediately, if not within hours, you can, you'll see. And the 10% off is not reflected in the cart. It'll just be 10% off the, the numbers that you see on their site. So it's kind of confusing in a way because when you look at it, you're like, well, where's my 10%? But it's already built into the price that you see online. And if you want to check that, you can just log out and then go back to Spellbinders. And then you'll see that the prices are different because you're logged out. So um, that's all. Uh, I just want to mention that because I get that question quite often. So it's pretty straightforward. That's what I like about this one. I mean, there is going to be a little work. Obviously, you're going to have these pieces, but um, we need four of the handset. Um, and it says you can do one with the hole. I guess if you want to give it like a little, make it look like this kind of thing, which I probably won't do, but uh, it does have a little tiny hole die if you want to use that, I guess, in anything, really. Um, you can just punch it, too, with a punch if that's easier. Um, you need two of the phone cradle. It says you need uh, four of the handset hand set caps, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. The foam base element, you need two of those. Um, this is the sentiment backer. I, you know, this is this is option. Well, just different, but we need um, your little strips of paper that are going to go in here that go inside that pull up. You'll see. Um, hopefully, maybe in the picture like this, right? These little things. You need. Um, Three of those and one blank one it says, but you can do however you want. You need four total of these little white strips or whatever color you want to make them. Probably lighter. Um, I guess it depends. If you're using like a mini album, you're going to put pictures on it. It doesn't matter what color it is, right? But if you're going to stamp on it or write something on it, you want it to be a lighter color. Uh, the three vignette piece, you need four of those and four of the crossbars. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. But basically all the pieces are here. Super easy. I'm going to get some colors. I think I'm going to make my phone black and accents in silver because I thought that looks really cute. Um, and I'm just going to keep it real basic so we can do this easily, okay? Um, yeah, so let me get my papers that I'm going to use and we'll get cutting. Okay. So, for the uh, sake of saving some time, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to cut two of this base out for now in the black paper. And this is that really thick paper from Crafters Companion because I want it to be sturdy. But at the same time, sometimes this paper does not want to cut through very easily. So hopefully it'll be okay because these are pretty basic uh, designs. So two of these. Um, four of the uh, handles, right? Yeah, four in black of the handset. I'm going to do the handset caps, which is this. And this is all on one piece, so it's kind of cool. Um, and this piece here, I'm going to do silver. So I'm going to run it through four times. It's going to be this also this little piece that's like your phone, this little piece right here. So I'll have a few of those unless I line up my paper differently, but either way. So I'll do four of those in the silver. I will also do, um, do you need one or two of those? This is the phone cradle you need two, so you can decorate the back, but uh, two of this in the silver. So let me just, this is silver. This is silver. And this bottom piece right here. 
two of those also in silver. So I'll just run those through together and then do it twice and then do this one twice more. And then our little circle. I'm just trying to figure out, do I want to do my circle silver like they have here and then do the buttons black and white? So Becca did an easier way of doing this and I like the her way. I might just do it that way just to make it easier, but either way I'd still need that. So we'll we'll talk about that in a minute after we're done doing the base because um, that is at the very end. We'll just pop it on. So let's get that going. And then for the inserts, I'm just going to do white just to make it easy. So we need these in white. We need four of them. It says uh, to do three in a blank one. I do not know why you need three in a blank one. But that's okay. I'm just going to cut out four for now. <laughs> okay. And then... Um, all these little other pieces that are supportive pieces that actually make the 3D, right? This, this piece and this piece, I'm going to cut them all out in black also. So this is, you need four of that and four of the vignette crossbar. So you need four of this one and four of this one. And what's interesting about this one, hold on. Why it has the little crossbar. I mean, why you do it separately, I don't know. But I have a feeling it's because if you want to cut out these little plaques, these little words on your white paper, you can then just cut out this piece of paper for the black to back it up or whatever color you want to show through. Does that make sense? Because it's not talking about that and there really is no reason why these two should be separate because you're always going to cut them out together like this. Okay, so I'm going to cut out four like this out of black. And I did want to mention something because people always ask about the different machines. It'll run through any machine. It'll go through your marquee, no problem, okay? All the pieces can go through your marquee. Of course, that means your Gemini Junior, your Empress. I don't know, let me see. I'll say I don't know if it'll go through the Empress Mini, but I have plates right here. Yep, it'll go through your Mini too, so that's pretty good. So that means obviously your Sizzix, your Big Shot, your Cuddle Bug, they'll, it'll work on all those. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'll be back when all the pieces are cut out. Quickly, I just want to show you how I'm doing this to make it faster. So when I run this through, I'm going to do this twice, the same setup, and then two more of these guys, right? Because we need two of this, two of this, four of these. So just to make it faster all in one pass, this is the Impress uh, smaller plates, and I will okay. be back. I just finished cutting all the black pieces, and of course I misspoke. I meant to say I needed four of the hand set. Look how cute. I did not even emboss or do anything to have that embossed, and it just got in there that cute little symbol. So we have two of this, four of these guys, Four of the small um, guards or supports, four of the crossbars, um, put those to the side. Um, and then I'm going to cut out this from white pieces of paper, but I'll do that last because I have a little more to talk about with that. And these guys again in the silver. So with the silver you need two of these. You need um, just again, yeah I think it's only two of this other one. Just need two of this one too. And then of course four of these because these are gonna go on the ends of the phone, the headset. Or hand, yeah, whatever, handset, whatever you wanna call it. This little part right here, <laughs> that's what this little guy does. So we need four of these. So I just have um, some silver. Uh, I wanna look for something shinier and Spellbinders have some really pretty shiny silver paper. I don't have that, I have the gold. And I thought, well, black and gold is cute too, but this is just um, metallic paper from um, Crafter's Companion, but it's more of a mirror card. It's just not that shiny. I don't know if you can see it. It's shiny, but it's not like what I wanted, like where it's smooth. This one has kind of like a grit to it, but that's okay. So I'm gonna run all these through and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one last of the little inserts. But again, this one has some stuff you can kind of play around with it. They're like this, but if you want, I'm gonna stick that down, doesn't really matter. Um, you can pop in one of these little things here so I um, I'll just put call me but he has hello beautiful and let's chat so cute Oopsie. so when you're doing this make sure you're cutting it the right way um, let me just make sure because it does have a bow in the paper and I believe that goes down up yeah so this part is the the top what's gonna uh, touch the handle. So just make sure your words, call me, aren't upside down, right? <laughs> so we have it here, call me. And you can put that wherever you like. And I suppose because I'm gonna do that, I need a backing piece. So let me, we can cut them both out at the same time. With this kind of thing, I always try to stick it down really well so it doesn't move and hopefully that's good enough. And then I need a little piece of black. 
and I have a piece left over here. Like I could take this little piece right here or let me see where. Again, that's what I'm saying. I think that's why you use this thing separate. Otherwise you can just cut a little piece out by hand, but I think, I think that's why this separates. Otherwise there's no reason to have this outer piece that doesn't cut that middle guard. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna cut it from this little piece here. It's just something that fits behind the words to, you know, um, so you can see the words. You can use it any color. I'm just using black to, for co to coordinate with everything else. And, All right, I'm gonna run this through and I will be right back. So for this first part, we need the four handles and our four little pieces and these little end caps. And I probably should have kept these separate in groups of two. I don't know if they're exactly the same or if they're a little bit different, but they almost look exactly the same. Let's see. Oopsie. I mean, that looks good. I just want to look at the picture and make sure because it looks about the same either way. I can't tell again, like I said, it looks like it's a little bit thicker on one end and then the other, but I don't see much difference. But if it's if you think it's a little bit thicker on one end than the other, the thicker end goes over here, like towards the inside. And then I'm just gonna use tacky glue because it dries faster, but use whatever you like. And I'm gonna do this for all four sets. And most of the time, oh you know there's a bunch of stuff built up on this thing. <laughs> Um, I like to, uh, you know, do all the same piece and then come back and do all the other piece, but I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. So I'm just going to stick this down, stick the other side down, and then stick our little white piece down. Oh, I just realized I didn't even start the coffee. I'm going to do that in just a minute <laughs> when I show you here so that's what you're gonna do with the headset or handset and then you take your little guy now this one has the words so I'm gonna quickly show you what this should look like if you're if you're using the little words then you're gonna take that black piece or whatever color you chose I'm just gonna use this because like I said it seems like that would work and I'm gonna stick it down but I'm gonna put glue all around here stick that down Hopefully it's touching the glue and covering the whole thing. Yep. All right. And then this piece goes here. On the front of it, okay? So then you can stick it to the back if you want, but no, it's supposed to go on the front. Okay, so I'll do the same thing for all of them. Just put the little silver end caps and the white piece of paper or insert on the other three. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just finishing up, I was just kind of holding them down. So like I said, tacky glue holds on really fast. Again, with a paper like this, it doesn't really warp because this is really thick paper, but tacky glue will warp thinner paper. So if you're using like Recollections or a thin cardstock, um, you might want to use an all-purpose glue like this one or a Zig um, zip dry glue. I used to love zip dry glue and I have some, I just haven't opened it because I have this open bottle, but this stuff is very similar. It's clear, it's like viscous and they're similar. Um, and people ask me about glues all the time, so that's why I'm mentioning that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate these just to have them ready, but um, I think the next step was to put a, together the aperture, or not the aperture, but the, I, what am I looking, the mechanism, I guess. So see how it has like a lot of um, embossing? I'm gonna keep that side up. And then that little silver strip, I believe, goes right in here somewhere. You know, it's funny that there's also marks here because you're going to pay attention to them on the other side. They're not as easy to see on the other side. They're easy to see here, but that's where you're going to put your guards, your little carrier that we we're going to create in just a minute. They go on this outer side. And that's what those marks are there for to kind of guide you, but they're easier to see on the one side than the other. Um, that's odd. Oh, I guess they're just as she's sewing there. Okay. I was just like, what is she showing here? Um, so it goes down at the bottom here. And you can put the glue on the strip. I like to put it base, you know, something easier. Put it on the actual base would be easier. But obviously not too much because you don't really know where this is going to stop. Um, and it just kind of lines up right down here. I do remember that I think Becca trimmed hers down. Not this part, but I'll show you the part in the next... And if you get some of this tacky glue, if you just take like a wet, something that's a little bit wet and just wipe it off, it'll come away from your mirror paper or whatever shiny paper you're using. 
um, on this part. This guy goes right here. And I do remember on the promo video or demo video, Becca cut it down because she wanted more of the under paper to show. So that's up to you, I suppose. I'm just gonna plop this down. I'm gonna do the same thing for that second piece. Okay, so this is where it starts getting tricky. Which is not really that tricky. I just, <laughs> this is where you're gonna pay attention, okay? So we have these two guys, we're gonna put them to the side for now. The instructions in the picture here aren't like super great. Um, oh, I wish I had sat down, I'm standing up, but oh well. Okay, so you're gonna take all four of these guys and see how the little, there's like a little slit right here that's gonna be facing down. So we have this guy. Oh, you know what? I didn't pay attention to if that guy should be facing down or up. So it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like they have them up. Okay, interesting. So the way it's divoted here is facing up. So all you're gonna do is take that, slide it in, and I would assume this part goes down first, I don't know. And I remember Becca saying it's gonna be tight. Well, she didn't say that. You know their videos, they don't talk, right? So she had put on there that it'll be tight. That's not that tight, but Okay, and then we'll take the next one, and again, this was easy for me, down and then push in, and maybe if it's easy because this paper is so thick, I don't know. I'm trying to get them facing the same way so they look nice in one direction, the rough cut is in the back, but I don't know if that even matters. There we go. That one's a little bit tighter. And then the last one. And we're almost done, guys, because once you set this up, all you do is glue it in, and then you just slide your little, your little hand pieces, hand set pieces in. Okay, so that's that side. And I don't believe there's any glue involved here. I think it's just that, and you leave it sticking out. Yeah, they're just out here in the wind like this. So see how it folds flat, but then it can pop up. So that's the point of that. And then we'll get another one. And again, I'll just do this side. So slot. Put that little slit in there. Pretty easy. It's really easy once you get, if you get that slit in there like right on, then it's not really a problem. It'll just go right in. There we go. So again, get that little slit in first, then push in the rest. I thought that was going to be a lot harder, to be honest. Okay. I did notice one of them did not cut all the way through, or it gave me a little problem right here. I can see that it's still stuck. So I'm going to use that for the top part, because for the top part, we still need two of these, but we don't need to put any inserts in them. So that's a good thing to have. These pieces. At the very end, you want to give them a bend here because that's what's going to stick to your front and back. So they already scored for you, but you got to get those in. And then this one too. And what I think is actually really cute, again, is that it collapses, right? So that's what your card does. Oot. Okay, so we have that mechanism ready. And I just want to kind of eyeball this again, see what we're supposed to be doing. Very interesting. Okay, so this one also just score the top two. And again, I'm using tacky glue. I always like using wet glues for projects like this because they hold up over time longer. But if you want to use a quick glue, boom, you know, I guess that's up to you. So I'm going to take one of these guys and put it down. And again, these little marks right here. I can see them better on this side. <laughs> Those little marks are where you're supposed to be putting this. And they kind of go on the outside of the marks. But to be honest, since I can't see them that great, I'm just going to eyeball this. <laughs> so I'm going to put some glue on this piece here and this piece here. And I'm going to imagine that it goes like right in the center here. You know, because I'm just, I can't see the marks on this side. Again, because my paper is super thick. So I'm going to hold it for just a second just to see if it stays a little bit. Again, what I always like to do whenever I'm gluing something like this is try to make the paper that needs to stick flare out up a little bit because that will help it push up against the paper that you're trying to stick it to. And then I'm going to come in with a bone folder. And just make sure those 
those little ends are touching really well. And then you're supposed to also, there's supposed to be marks here too, and probably on the other side. But again, you can pretty much just eyeball it because you have an idea of where it should be. There should be like right inside. I hope you can kind of see that. Right inside the edges. So I'm just going to put down some glue. So hopefully this will work since I had to kind of eyeball it. Because I remember saying that there's marks there. I'm like, where are the marks? Yeah, yeah I don't really see them. I think that'll be fine. We just got to make sure this will slide in and out if the way I did it. Right, that'll be another way of telling. If I put this around the edge. Yep, that'll be great. Okay. So I'm going to give these a little moment to dry before I go on to the second set to attaching this. Okay. And I will okay. be back. So again, I like to keep things popped up a little bit so that they want to push down onto this. So I'm going to put my glue on here. This is so cute. Not difficult at all really because it's just the pieces you're putting together. Now again here, I don't know, I'm just gonna... <laughs> I suppose I could turn it over and look at it that way, but yeah, let's turn this over. Put that down. Put this on here. Yeah, that's good. That is good. Of course it wants to collapse like it's supposed to do, but no. But no, don't do that yet. I'm not worrying about those top ones. They're just kind of floating in the air for now. I'm just trying to get these guys in place. What I'm paying attention to is also to make sure that it's level, that they're even. So just make sure of that. And again, I'm just kind of holding them down. I'm going to try to stand it up just to make sure. Perfect. And then these two guys. Yeah, one there and this guy here. Okay, so I'm going to hold this in place for a little bit. And then all we're going to do is slide in our little pieces and finish the dial, the button, the, yeah, the uh, dial. Okay, <laughs> got my coffee going. So there are a lot of instructions on the back of this as how you want to do this. I'm going to make it a little bit different, I think. I'm trying to see why I have the, okay. All right. So I'm going to take these two outer pieces, if I can get them off of this thing here. Oh my goodness, let me... So I had seen last night that my nails were like completely thrashed and I was like, oh no, I should take them off before, or the polish off before I do my video. And then I got right on here, so <laughs> uh, I'm like, ah, my nails look horrible. Right now we don't need this little center piece, I'll get that in a minute. Oh, but I guess what I can show you is how this collapses. And I guess you can train it just so that you're ready to put this in an envelope. If that's really what you want to do with it, I probably would never, well, not this one. It'd be very cute to send. But okay, so you can collapse it. And then we can bring all our little pieces in. So I'll put this one that says, call me, which is my friend, let me see. This one's my friend, I guess. And you slide them in and let them sit on those little slots, right? And I probably should start in the back coming to the front because I can't see what I'm doing otherwise, but that's okay. We'll get it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so sturdy. You have to use really good paper, you guys. That's what I would recommend. Um, I assume for the little flaps, if you want to use like something thinner, that's fine, but you got to go with something sturdy. Look at that. So cute. Okay. I feel like it needs a little red, a little pop of red, but we'll see. Oh man, maybe I'll do that with the dial. I don't know, I'm just gonna make it basic, but in my mind I was like, with a little pop of red would be very cute. Okay, so this is the part I kinda wanna think about. I want the background to be white. So I'm just gonna get some of this white paper. I'm gonna cut just a circle in just white, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay. So I have my white circle. That's gonna be the background. On this black one, I'm gonna cut out the numbers with the outer die. 
you don't really have to do the outer dye on this one because we're not going to keep everything. It's going to be weird. I saw Becca do this and hopefully I remember it right because this was a, you know, a couple weeks ago now. Um, so that we can get the numbers without having to like pick out or get the outside without having to do too much. Um, without fussing too much on that. So let me put this in here. And I'm just going to get that going. But I have to protect this one pretty good. So I think this is what I'm going to show you next. And the silver one, I'm going to do the same thing. What the heck happened here? <laughs> Something poked through. Oh, I see. So you want all your pieces to stay in there just like this. You see how that's in there? Oopsie. One fell out. One was naughty. All right. And to me, I don't think it's a problem to pop these out, to be honest, but um, this is kind of how she did it, so I'll do that in a second. Then we're going to cut out a silver one that has everything cut up. But we'll cut that out in a minute because this is the more important part right now. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> and let me see if I can do this close up a little bit. Did I pop that number back in there correctly? Let me make sure my two is in place okay, and I'll so This might back. seem weird, but what Becca did was she left like this. She put glue, only a little dab of glue on either side of the number. So that the number didn't really get any glue on it. So hopefully try to avoid your numbers, okay? So I'm going to go around all of this whole thing and just put little dabs of glue on opposite sides of the numbers. <laughs> and I'll be right back. Okay, and then after she did that, she brought back her base. So my base is white. And she popped it right on here. And she says to put some weight on it and then come back like in 10 minutes, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> when it's dry. So I'm smoothing that out really well. And then I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna move this to the side so I can move on. But I'm gonna put some weight on that. And hopefully that's good enough. And I'll show you why we did that in a second. Cause otherwise you would just do something slightly different and it's not the biggest deal. That's what I'm saying, the numbers pop out real easy. They're not that small, the little circle. So I think you can just do it by hand, but that was her tip. So I'm gonna go with that. And then our little silver piece, so if you can imagine my my dial, the way I'm building it up, is going to have a white background. So where you see the pink, it'll be white. Okay. Sorry. Where you see the numbers, they'll be white. The pink will be black. And then this silver piece needs to be cut out, this top piece here. So for that one, you do need all your pieces is what it looks like, but I don't even think you need to do that, but that's okay. Because you still have one more topper that goes on top of that, and you probably can't even tell behind it that, you know. So what's funny is, like, the whole thing is what it is, but this is the, the most persnickety part, if you will. Okay, so we have that guy. This guy. And again, this middle piece, which I suppose you don't have to cut out. I mean... Yeah, they didn't, they didn't cut it out. I'm not going to cut it out because I'll just leave this for the center piece. So we'll just do that. I'm going to run this through right quick and I'll be right back. So on this one, you just want all the circles to pop out. Like we don't need anything from it other than just the outer silver stuff. So if everything falls out, that's fine. Uh, of course, it depends on what you're doing. But for me, you just boop. And I suppose you can keep those numbers for something else. That'd be really cute. You have little silver numbers and a pound sign and a something else I don't know all right I don't know if this is long enough on this one but let's turn this over and what I should be able to do is remove this black piece keeping our other little pieces down I think I need to dry a little bit longer but that's good enough where I can kind of see what I'm doing so hopefully you can see I'm taking this up a little bit at a time, trying to keep that circle down. So if you did not want to do this, all you have to do is cut out your silver piece and then pop the black pieces back in or whatever it is that you want that outer piece to be. So that little bit of glue that we put on either side of the number is helping us hold down our little circles. And then we remove that, right? Because otherwise all you have to do is let the little circles pop out like this. And then bring them back. So let's say this is... I'm going to show you right now. We're still going to pop out the numbers. That, all you would do is then... Oopsie. 
Am I, there it goes. Am I, am I missing one? Something's wrong. You would, you know, have it clear and then just bring back what you want to pop in. It's not that hard, but this is a little bit faster, a little bit nicer. I don't know if that was enough glue there and I'm going to need something very sharp. We're going to flick out the numbers because your number shouldn't be stuck down. That's it. One, two. <laughs> so funny. So I'm going to flick them all out like that. The only ones you need to be careful with are like number four. No, number four is fine. Well, number four is fine. Number six. Let's say I pop out number six. But I still want the middle part of number six, right? That little dot in the center. So I'm just going to pop that out. Pop that out. Put down a little dab of glue. And put that back. Now if you want to, you don't have to. It'll just be that much cuter, right? You have your little... I put a little too much glue, but that's okay. A little dry clear, okay? So number six and like number eight and number nine, ten, uh, zero. You want to keep those little pieces and pop them right back where they should be. I will be right back. So to finish that up, we're just going to put the little black circle. I'm just going to cut it out of this since it's already kind of set up. And I'm using black, but use whatever color you like. I already have that little accent piece in silver. I have a couple of them, so I'm just going to keep that. And trim this out real quick in the marquee. So yeah, this whole thing works in the marquee, which is really great. And the Empress Mini. Let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to take this and really glue this up. Especially around the edges. Try to get it real close to. I'm not trying to put too much. I don't want it to squeeze all everywhere, but I do want it to actually do what it needs to do. And I'm going to eyeball this really well here. And just put that on there. So hopefully you like that little trick. Um, it does make a difference though in the way it looks. So I don't know if, you know what I'm saying? The numbers and everything is kind of recessed in there instead of just getting pop, kind of popped up into the top. Does that make sense? But if that bothers you, then again, cut all the pieces and do what they do in the instructions. Now, I do know that since I did that, it came out a little bit different here, so I'm going to trim this piece down. Okay, I'm going to hold this down until it stays nice and dry. And I think I'm going to pop dot the center, which means I'll have to pop dot that other little piece that, um, this piece that looks like the dial, um, guard. I suppose if there's <laughs> oh my gosh this is so cute okay let me see where that little piece is supposed to go so this little guy and they have it popped up too so uh, I'm gonna cut down some uh, foam adhesive probably just on the edge here you know what I'm saying and this one's thicker than the one I just used so this will work because this is like twice the thickness I don't know if you can see that <laughs> maybe even three times the thickness. I'm gonna cut down a little piece that will fit behind here and I'll be right back. I just cut like a really weird little piece there <laughs> that will fit here. And again, just kind of using their thing for reference, they put it here. So cute. Do you guys remember dialing phones? <laughs> I always like the smaller, like the lower numbers. You just go ch ch and then ch and it go all the way back. <laughs> I don't know why we don't still have those. I like them. Oh, especially when you're almost done and you missed, uh, you hit the wrong number. <laughs> you hit the wrong thing you had away. You're like, ah, do it again. Okay, and then this guy, do you want to pop it up? I don't know. Well, anyway, so if you're going to send it, you probably want, well, if you're going to send it, yeah, actually, it'll be okay. Um, if you want a little bit of dimension, but I'd rather just keep it flat. So I'm just going to stick this down flat. And use the same tacky glue. Oh, and I have it facing the wrong way. Do you guys see that? The handles are this way. Now, again, you could have just, uh, there's like a, definitely a place to center this here. Um, pop the hole in here, even with a hole punch or the little hole that it comes with, you just run it through at the beginning, right? Make a little hole. At the beginning, also make a little hole in this one, and then you connect the two with like a little ribbon or something. But I think this is realistic looking enough without any of that. 
and it is super cute you guys i'll have pictures for you there were quite a few steps i mean to me the hardest thing was just putting together the little numbers and that's you know that wasn't too bad look how cute that is it had a little pop of red maybe like a little red heart here or something and obviously you put your little pictures in here you put your little sentiments you know your little gorgeous girls drawings or colorings that would be really cute on each one um and then of course you know flowers and whatever decorations you want to put on it especially if you're not going to send it through the mail or if you're going to put it in a box to send through the mail i think it'd be really cute so all right guys thanks for watching i hope that helped you out um this is really sturdy it feels really nice and then again i don't want to squish it but that's the point you can squish it down and put it in an envelope and send it off so really cute all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.